Hi, everybody, and welcome. Thank you so much for coming today. Um, I guess we'll get started. I'm Dr. Laura Lieberman. I'm director of the Office of Faculty Development at Memorial Sloan Kettering. Um, and we are blessed to have a lot of wonderful student programs here in the summer. And our neighboring institutions uh, um, here also have some fantastic programs. And a lot of times we get calls from people in the spring or even in June saying, It'd be great to work at one of your institutions in the summer, and by then, the deadlines have all passed. So we thought it would be good to get the information out to you early when it's early enough for you to investigate and, and look into the programs and find out about them and actually apply in time to meet the deadline. So also, sometimes this information is not really all gathered in one place, so you have to kind of know what you're looking for in order to find it. So we thought this would be helpful for everybody. So how many of you are currently college students? Okay, and how many of you are here on behalf of a college student? How many of you are neither college students nor here on behalf of a college student, but you're college students at heart? Okay, one person, okay. Um, all right, so uh, we have a handout. If uh, anybody doesn't have it, raise your hand and we'll get one to, oh my goodness gracious. So while the panelists are coming up, oh, Andrea is going to hand them out. She's really good at this. This is Andrea Beharano who sends you all the emails. Um, so we're going to, we have a handout. We're going to be having nine programs that we're going to hear about a little bit in this room. Each one is going to talk for about three minutes, just, you know, the name of the person who's representing the program, the name of the program, what institution it's at, what's the goal of the program, um, who's, wh who's eligible, um, and uh, what they're looking for in a candidate. And th that's going to be pretty brief. We're thinking maybe maybe 30, 40 minutes in here, and then we're gonna go out to the tables, and there's a lovely map of where the tables are, which Nicola Buchanan, our administrator, will explain to you when it's time to go out to the tables, um, and then you can ask uh, your individual questions there. And I'm here to answer questions. We have some students who have participated in the previous programs who are also here. In addition to handing out this handout, everybody who RSVP'd, we are going to email you uh, the handout electronically so that you can access the links. Um, so if you didn't email an RSVP or somebody didn't RSVP on your behalf, um, just make sure we have your email address because we'd like to make sure that we can email you the handout so that you get the information. So um, I guess with that, and we'll have food out there when we do the tables. Um, so I guess without further ado, we can go ahead and get started. So we're going to start with the programs that are at Memorial Sloan Kettering Cancer Center. So we're going to have programs from the Office of Scientific Education and Training, uh, the Summer Undergraduate Research Program, uh, Epidemiology and Biostatistics Summer Internship Program. These all have really cool uh, abbreviations and acronyms. Uh, the MSK Immigrant Health and Cancer Disparity Service. Um, and we're also going to hear about MSK volunteering. So uh, without further ado, I guess we'll get started. So Romina, um, we can start with you. And uh, you can tell us about the fabulous programs offered by the Office of Scientific Education and Training. Take Good it away, evening. Ramina. Thank you. Good evening, everyone. My name is Ramina Rodriguez, and I work in the Office of Scientific Education and Training at Memorial Sloan Kettering. I coordinate approximately four programs, which I'll be discussing with you today. The names are Chemical Biology Summer Program, Computational Biology Summer Program, Molecular Imaging Summer Program, a little bit older, okay. There we go. And MSK Engineering Summer Program. We are looking for undergraduate freshmen, juniors, and sophomores who are interested in pursuing, hopefully, a PhD or an MD PhD. This doesn't mean that if you're pursuing an MD, we're not going to look for your applications, but we are pursuing for um, people who will bridge into our pipeline programs, which are our MSK grad schools programs. We do not require any previous research lab experience. If you do have research lab experience, it'll be a plus, but we don't require it. Uh, during the 10-week um, program, all students will be paid a stipend of $6,000. At this moment, we currently don't have any housing available. Um, however, last year, our interns were able to accommodate their own housing on their own. For all the four programs, the program lasts 10 weeks, as I just stated, and it starts on June 3rd, and it ends August 9th. The focus areas, which I'll be discussing for all of the different programs, I just want to say what are the eligibilities that we're looking for. For the CompBio program, we're looking for computer science, applied math, and programming experience. For chemical biology, we're looking for students who are proficient in chemistry. 
This goes um, likewise for molecular imaging. I do want to state that the computational biology program and the chemical biology program, it's a tri-I institutional program. What this means is that all participants will either be placed in a lab at Wild Cornell, MSK, or Rockefeller. For MSK engineering program, we are looking for students who are proficient in engineering. During the 10-week period, you will all participate, the applicants will participate in intensive weekly journal clubs. We will also have um, journal, joint lectures. So all of but the one side of these programs is we have approximately 40 interns that we accept. And really, at the end of the program, everybody uh, gets to know each other, builds a relationship. So we do have joint lectures, which are um, happen every two weeks. And at the end, we also have a poster session. Everyone will be present a poster at the end. And the most exciting part of this program that we received feedback last year from our interns were that they had, not only did they build relationships with each other, but they really learned um, amongst each other. All the programs, approximately, we accept um, six to 10 students for all of the programs. One of the uh, things I want to mention last year, we didn't have any, um, a lot of social events for the interns. So this year we are incorporating more social events. Uh, we did receive a lot of feedback on that. So if you do apply, we'll have much more uh, social events for everyone. And if you want to know exactly how to apply, please go to sam.mskcc.org. Our application just launched today. The deadline to apply is February 1st. 2019. So you have plenty of time to apply. Thank you. And we can also add that link to the handout when we send it to you. If there's any additional links that people suggest, we can we can uh, send that forward. Okay. So um, so that's uh, uh, Office of Scientific Education and Training. And now we're going to hear about the Summer Undergraduate Research Program, which is a laboratory research program. And uh, we're going to hear from Linda Burnley. Hello. Um, I'm Linda Burnley, the Associate Dean of the Gerstner Graduate School of Biomedical Sciences here at MSK, and I also welcome all of you here today. Um, I think a lot of what I'm going to say is going to be uh, some of what Romina has said to you, but the difference I will try to describe to you in the program now called Summer Undergraduate Research Program, which stands for SERP is, and our students who go through this program are known as SERPES, um, is that it is one of the longer standing, if not the most longer, long standing program at MSK. And we've been accepting undergraduate students into this program for well over 15, maybe even 20 years before I was here seven years ago. Um, the students apply through the, through the graduate school, which is the Gerstner Graduate School of Biomedical Sciences, through our website, which is a different pathway for application than the one that Romina just described. Our application is due February 1, and it was launched in August, so we already have a lot of applications. It is probably one of the more competitive programs. We have uh, close to 900 applicants mm -hmm. per year. And we accept about 35 students to fill a class of 20 to 25 students. These students are placed in labs uh, in, uh, M in SKI and MSK. Um, and um, unlike what uh, Romina said all, uh, earlier, we do require uh, prior research experience. And students can apply from freshman, sophomore, junior years. But if you're more advanced in your application, we expect more uh, science courses, advanced courses. And in other words, um, the students who enter this, uh, this program, we expect will have uh, enough lab experience to hit the ground running, more or less, so that they will work closely with graduate students, postdocs, and their mentors to have a really high quality uh, experience in the lab here because um, the goal of this program, which I didn't mention earlier, but it is to do research and it is to attract students, to give students the opportunity to do research for um, their, it, it, their future uh, goals to enter a graduate program and, uh, and or MD, PhD program. We do have applications from MD only, MD, PhD, and PhD. But I would say that it is true uh, off the record, 
preference may be given to the ones who are interested in PhD. We're always looking for those future biomedical scientists. Um, let me see if I've left anything off here. I said the application deadline, hands-on e experience. We also have journal clubs. We have social activities. We have weekly scientific seminars where the students come together and get to know one another. We also, uh, the SERP program is, is one that also offers a really good benefit and that is housing. The students are housed together at Marymount uh, College, uh, which is not too far from here. They seem to like that experience. We also offer a, a stipend of $6,000 uh, for the 10 week period. We all start on the same date, which is usually the, not usually, but is it gonna be Monday or Tuesday? Monday. Monday, the first Monday in June, and it ends on August 9th with a grand finale, a poster session where all the summer students will come together and present their, their research and all the faculty from the tri-institutional area are invited. And it's also an opportunity for students to meet faculty uh, when they're here. Um, I think that's more than three minutes. Let me see. Um, we also do several workshops with our tri-institutional neighbors to help students learn how to, to present themselves and to make the best uh, application for graduate school in the future. And uh, I'd be happy to talk to anyone afterwards in the lobby if I didn't cover anything. Thank you. Great. Thank you. Can everybody hear? Having a little trouble hearing? No, it's okay? Okay, we'll speak right into that mic. Okay, and now to tell us about volunteering experiences, I give you Michael Hannon. Hi, uh, my name is Michael Hannon. I'm the volunteer coordinator for the regional network. We have locations, here, obviously here in Manhattan, but also uh, at three locations in Long Island, in Comac, Hop Hog, and Rockville Center, soon to be Nassau County next year, as well as Jersey, uh, Middletown, Basking Ridge, and um, Bergen, which just opened up this past summer. Um, so Volunteer Resources provides a wide variety of unique opportunities for individuals um, of high school and college age to build their soft, soft skills in terms of engaging with patients. If you haven't been in the hospital setting uh, before, it's a great opportunity to get used to it. Uh, you, get, you have opportunities to work with staff in terms of uh, helping with site navigation and providing operational support. Uh, we, we play, our, our volunteers play a major role in supporting the nursing support services and in picking up jobs to transport patients throughout the entire hospital here at the main ca campus. There are similar opportunities in, outpatient, in the outpatient setting from that respect. Um, our volunteers also uh, support urgent, our urgent care center, which is the equivalent, equivalent of an emergency room for specific to MSK patients. Uh, they help with making sure that our patients are comfortable with amenities, uh, whether it's something to drink, um, pillows, changing over beds, cleaning surface areas, things like that. Um, we also have volunteer assistant roles on the inpatient floors and the chemo, uh, the chemo treatment suites in the outpatient setting. Um, and then there's our pediatric program, which there is an age requirement for 17 of 17 years. Um, I should say 14 is the, you're all 14, but 14 is the age requirement for volunteers in general. Uh, our pediatric program supports our child life staff in terms of providing diversional activities for, for the children, for the pediatric population. And you, you're there to have fun with them and make sure that they're comfortable, give their parents a break, let them, they get, the parents get very stressed and having a volunteer make sure that their child's having a good time allows them to take a walk and de-stress a little bit. So it really goes a long way in um, helping the staff and the parents. Uh, in terms of some of the requirements that we have, um, so our application process, I would highly encourage you to apply in the January and February month uh, January and February of 2019. Our application deadline will be March 15th, but I will um, I will encourage you to apply before then because we get we have a revolving door. Excuse me, we have a revolving door of applications that we review. It is very selective and competitive, um, and we select 
roughly 100 to 120 volunteers for the summer months. Uh, the, commit, the time commitment for volunteers during the summer months is uh, six hour, a minimum of six hours per week for at least two months, eight, eight, eight consecutive weeks. We encourage you to spend all three months um, with us, June, July, and August. Uh, and if you are a student who's here in Manhattan and have time during the regular school year to be to come once a week, the requirement would be two to three hours, which is relatively one shift. Um, and our greatest need is between nine and five, so a shift may be from nine to 12 p.m. or 12 to three, or even we have some evening and weekend, weekend hours as well. Um, I think that's about it. So I'll be outside if you have any questions. And as Michael mentioned, uh, Volunteer Services has opportunities not just for college students, but for high school students also. So those of you who are here on behalf of a college student or those college students who have a sibling who's in high school, if there's anyone in your life who's a high school student, there would be opportunities for them. So that's something you can also talk to Michael about at the tables. And now we're going to hear about immigrant health and cancer disparities from Claudia Ayash. Claudia. Hi, everybody. Good evening. I'm Claudia Ayash. I'm the manager at the Center for Immigrant Health and Cancer Disparities. And our goal is to decrease health disparities amongst immigrant minority in medically underserved communities here uh, in the New York area, nationally and globally. We have several programs in our service. Most of our programs are language and cultural based. Um, just to give you a few examples, we have a taxi network uh, whose goal is to improve health out outcomes amongst the 140,000 taxi drivers in New York City. Uh, we have an Arab Health Initiative to improve health outcomes of Arab populations, both locally, nationally, and internationally. We have a food pantry project where we run food pantries in eight hospitals throughout New York City for cancer patients. Uh, and we have a language and interpreting program where we train people to become medical interpreters in order to decrease um, cancer health disparities, uh, again, amongst uh, immigrant me medically underserved populations. We have been accepting immigra um, immigrants, <laughs> interns for many, many years. Uh, we accept interns on a rolling basis, so we accept interns all year long. We accept undergraduate students, and we also accept graduate students from programs to which we have an affiliation agreement. Um, so if you are a graduate student, uh, you can speak to myself and my colleague, Suzanne, uh, outside by the table. We can tell you which schools we have affiliation agreements with. Interns who come work with us um, get to do both community outreach and research because we use a model called community-based participatory research. So we work very closely with the communities that we serve um, to identify their problems and to develop interventions to help, the, to help and then we test these interventions. So for us, community outreach and research go hand in hand. So for us to do our research, we need to have community partnerships. Um, so you get to experience both. We, interns that come work with us tend to go on to pursue MPHs, uh, MDs, PhDs, and nursing degrees. Most of our interns have an interest in public health, and of course you must have an interest in health disparities. Um, it is a big plus to speak a second language, particularly Spanish, Mandarin, Arabic, French, Bengali, but it's not mandatory because we have, I mean, a lot of our work is language-based, but not everything. And we ask for internships to be a minimum of six weeks. We have interns who stay with us for a semester. We've had interns who stay with us all year, um, you know, again, depending on their school schedule. So Suzanne and I will be available afterwards if you guys have specific questions. We, well, we will have flyers available for all the programs that recruit interns. Thank you. Okay, and now we're going to hear about, I think, maybe the newest program, uh, which is Epidemiology and Biostatistics uh, Summer Internship Program for Undergraduates, the Qualitative Sciences Summer Undergraduate Research Experience, or QSURE. And Casey Tan will be presenting. Hi, my name is Casey Tan. I'm a faculty biostatistician at MSKCC. Um, I'm also an assistant director of the QSURE program, which has a mouthful of a name. Um, my department, the Department of Biostatistics and Epidemiology, offers a 10-week summer internship um, for undergraduate students who are particularly interested in the quantitative side of cancer research. So in our program, uh, each student is paired uh, with a faculty mentor, 
um, and they will be working on one specific research project. And through this one-on-one -on -one experience, um, they will be examining very specific um, questions related to a topic in cancer research. So in the past, uh, some interns have examined questions such as um, which factors are associated with when someone develops pancreatic cancer or which genetic mutation is uh, predictive of when lung cancer comes back. So um, this internship is particularly uh, interesting for someone who loves mathematics, statistics, numbers, uh, and are interested in learning about how numbers can help us learn more about cancer and treatments. Um, you do not have to be a statistics major, but we do require at least one semester of college level statistics class. Um, uh, the whole goal of our program is to uh, develop the quantitative skills of the students and our fellows and encourage them to think about graduate studies, particularly a PhD in quantitative sciences and a career in the future in quantitative sciences, cancer research or not. And um, our applications are now open. Uh, it actually, the deadline is much sooner than February. We are actually um, closing our applications in January 4th. Um, but we have a, a long uh, selection process and we also match it to the program, uh, so your research project that is closely related to your interest based on your, um, your application. So if numbers is your thing, come out uh, to the tables and feel free to talk to myself or Shireen um, and we'll be able to answer any questions that you guys have. Okay, that's fantastic. Thank you guys so much, thank you. So we're going to do the questions out there so you get individual time, one-on-one -on -one time with each of these panelists because I want to make sure everybody gets to the table. So um, I guess we'll thank the MSK folks and they're invited to go back into the audience and we're going to call our wonderful colleagues from uh, Rockefeller and Cornell to join us. And while they're sitting in the chairs, I just want to say a few other things about the summers. Uh, my office coordinates a bunch of seminars for all the students who are here in the summer in whatever capacity, high school, college, medical school, um, on topics that are of interest to a broad range of students. Because um, we have hundreds of students here in the summer in various different programs, and we thought it would be a nice opportunity to bring all of the students together. So there are opportunities for all of the students to meet, and, and I think that's a helpful thing. So I guess we will start with the um, Tri-Institutional Gateways to the Laboratory program. And to tell us about it is uh, Benjamin Levitt. Hello. Hi, my name is Ben Levitt. I work with the MD-PhD program, the Tri-Institutional MD-PhD program. So we're housed um, uh, just across the street over there um, with the uh, Gateways to the Laboratory Program. This is a also a 10-week program, about the same dates that a lot of the other ones run, June through the beginning of August, for freshmen and sophomore students, so students who have just finished their freshman year or sophomore year, um, who have an interest in pursuing an MD-PhD degree, the dual degree. Uh, it's for students from underrepresented minority groups or those who face other uh, disadvantages, socioeconomic or social um, disadvantages. The applications open today, which is nice timing for this event. Our application process, you, there'll be, it's on the handout, I think, that Dr. Lieberman will give out, also on the brochure, you could talk to me. The applications go through the Leadership Alliance um, and run through February. And, so the, and the focus of our program really is preparing people to do the dual MD-PhD degree. So everyone is paired with a lab, either at Cornell, here at Sloan, or at Rockefeller, uh, where they do research. And also we have clinical activities for them. So they'll do uh, clinical shadowing, they'll watch surgeries and other clinical um, activities. I don't wear a white coat, so I stay away from that mostly. Um, it's great stuff, just not my stuff. Um, uh, we also have a journal club with, that is run by current MD-PhD students. Um, everyone at the end of the summer, we go all to the Leadership Alliance Conference, which is a national conference where everyone gives a talk on their research 
and then at the very end of the program, come back and we have a final presentation of talks and posters here for uh, members of their labs, the transfusional community, and also we fly in a family member uh, to watch them give that talk, so that's exciting for everyone. We provide a stipend and housing. Uh, the housing is uh, the first year medical school uh, housing. And I think, yeah, so we don't require any previous lab experience. If you have some, that's great. But if you don't, as long as you do have an interest, um, then that, that is enough. And potential, we do ask for, uh, you know, is someone to be able to uh, write a letter for you to say something about, about your interest. And we do, let's see, we've been doing this now since the 90s. Oh, I'm sure I'm over three minutes. I'll, I'll talk quick, quicker. Uh, and every single student who has passed through our program, while well, they've not all gone on to do MD-PhD, everyone who's gone through our program who did seek out an MD-PhD program has been accepted somewhere. Some of our students come, on, come here to do MD-PhD um, in the TRI-I program, uh, but everyone who, that is their focus, that's, that's their desire, they do go on to do that somewhere, which is uh, pretty rad. Anyway, I, I'll be outside, I'd be happy to answer any other questions. We do have a former Gateway student here. Is she here right now? There she is, Abby, hi. Um, a Gateway's uh, student and current MD-PhD student. So if you have Gateway's questions, if you have MD-PhD questions, um, you see got Abby at the table out there. And uh, it's a tri-institutional program, so they might be working at a lab at MSK, Rockefeller, or Cornell? Okay. Yeah. Okay, and now to tell us about the Traveler's Summer Research Fellowship, um, we have Sahira Torres. Hi, I am the coordinator for community service at Wild Cornell Medical College, um, but I'm also the assistant to the director of the Traveler's Summer Research Fellowship Program, um, Dr. Elizabeth Wilson Anstey. Um, the Traveler's Program, which I will just say now, um, just to, uh, has completed its 50th anniversary this past summer. So we are very proud of that fact. Um, it is, if not the oldest of, the, that, of summer programs that's geared towards students who are interested in the MD um, field. Um, the Travelers Program is uh, for applicants who are currently in their junior year of college at least and with a B or higher grade is to be more competitive. Um, and ha applicants do need to be at least a permanent resident or US citizen in order to apply, um, making sure. And uh, applications are open as of right now. Um, I have information at the tables outside to give you the link. And the deadline is February 1st. Um, participants in the program are, it's split, their week is split into two. Mondays, we have lectures on cardiovascular physiology, public health seminars, and careers in a particular field of medicine, and each week is different. It's a seven-week program, sorry, didn't mention that. And um, the rest of the week, we do pair you with a faculty sponsor at Weill Cornell Medicine to do a a particular research project that they are working on, whether it's bench or basic sci um, clinical science um, nature. Uh, they, and they could either be at Payne Whitney, which is in Westchester, down, one of the downtown facilities in Manhattan, or right across the street. Participants are given a stipend, and they are housed as well in the first year um, medical students dormitory, which is only a couple of blocks away. And uh, a great candidate would be someone who has demonstrated a passion for medicine and has served in an underserved population, underserved community in the United States. And any questions, I'll answer outside. Thank you. 
And now we are going to hear about the access program at Cornell, and we are going to hear from a student who went through the access program and is now a PhD student. So um, take it away, Chloe Lopez-Lee. Hi. Um, so yeah, it's interesting because I am not the director. The director is Dr. Marcus Lambert, and he's amazing. And I did the program not once, but twice, because I loved it that much. Um, and it definitely works because now I'm at Cornell as a neuroscience PhD student, so yay. Um, about the program, it's a 10-week summer internship. It is paid, there is a stipend involved. There is also housing, so you are provided housing. The goal of the program is essentially it's geared towards pre-PhD students. That being said, when I went in, I wanted to do an MD-PhD. So if you're interested in some kind of degree, it really is a wonderful experience. And the reason that I say that is that it, because it really tries to prepare you holistically. So not only are you matched with a mentor based on your particular research interests, but you also have a journal club that you attend every week. You have GRE prep for free. It's really expensive, so it's great to have it for free. You do have social events. Um, you are also paired with a graduate student mentor. So you have both the PI as a mentor and a graduate student mentor. Um, the cohorts usually are about seven to 11 people, so they're pretty small, which is really great. You get a lot of individualized attention. Um, and it's a wonderful program. You also have a poster session at the end. You also go to a conference together, so you also go to the Leadership Alliance Conference together. Um, you become very close in it, and if you have any questions about anything, about the selection process, about graduate student life and how it's been to transition from someone who was in the program to an actual graduate student, whether I felt prepared for that, definitely come by. I have flyers, I have free mints, I have candy, so. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, and now we're going to hear about the uh, Rockefeller University Summer Undergraduate Research Fellowship Program. And we are going to hear from Emily Harms. Hello, I'm Emily Harms. I'm the Senior Associate Dean at Rockefeller. And I'm also the director of our Summer Undergraduate Research Fellowship Program. So Linda told you that their summer students are SERPES, our summer students are surfers. Um, <laughs> Ours is also a 10-week program. It runs from the beginning of June to the middle of August. Our application launched today, and like other programs, is due February 1st. Uh, our stipend is $6,000 for the 10-week program, um, and we do also provide housing if it's needed. So the goal of our program is essentially to have students experience what it would be like to be a graduate student in the biomedical sciences to see if it's a good fit for you and to see if maybe Rockefeller is a good fit for you. Um, and we also try to prepare you to uh, submit a competitive PhD program application. So the accepted students conduct mentored research in a laboratory at the university. will match you with a lab based on the research interests you put on your application. There is also a weekly lecture series with faculty who discuss their research, but also their career path, so you can find out how they got to be where they are today. A weekly journal club led by graduate students, um, professional development workshops getting you ready for graduate school, and organized social activities. And like other programs, we end with a poster session at the end of the summer where you present your work to the entire Rockefeller community. So our program is open to uh, students in their sophomore or junior year, and we're also open to international students. So international students are encouraged to apply. And we're primarily looking for students who have a demonstrated interest in research, um, and uh, primarily who are interested in PhD programs, although we also take students who are interested in MD-PhD programs. And I'm happy to take questions outside. I also have a, a SURF alumna with me, Gabriella, Gabriella, who's in the front here. And she was a uh, SURF student and is now a PhD student in Rockefeller's graduate program. Fantastic. OK. So um, uh, that concludes the panel portion of our program.